Hey guys, thanks for tuning back in. Today we're at Finnish Brutality, possibly the best shooting match ever, presented by Verstaleka and a whole bunch of other awesome companies here who help make the stages what they were. So let's dig right into it. First stage, as uh, there is always in a proper brutality match, is a Casarda drill, which means throwing the kettlebell and shooting from where it lands and repeating. Now, this time it's called the Casarda Off Road. We start in a Patria uh, Finnish APC with the 56 pound kettlebell, and you then run out to the, the shooting track here. There are a whole bunch of obstacles in the way, and you have to throw the kettlebell around and through the obstacles. And if it ever goes outside the yellow and black tape, you actually have to pick it up, bring it back to where you threw it from, and try again. The logs here uh, each represent bonuses. As you get the kettlebell past each one, you get a, a small bonus. And of course, the logs also prevent you from throwing the kettlebell uh, beyond that log. If you, well, some people can manage to heave it over the log, but most people are going to get to the log and have it roll up and bounce into the log, just like that. So, by the way, I will be doing a rifle and pistol review here, but I opted to run this brutality match with my custom G3 in 308 with a sort of standard three and a half power ACOG on it. So that's what I'm using here. Uh, I like this stage. I always do pretty darn well with these. Um, I really like the combination of the, the physical exertion and then the shooting challenge. So I know that the problem coming up here is that I'm not going to be able to get it over that last log. I'm almost certainly going to get it to the log and then have to do one little tiny bloop over the log to get to the last shooting position. So we'll give it a darn hard try and it's going to bounce on the tire and maybe theoretically could have gotten over but didn't. So I have to make this shot and then drop the kettlebell over, and then I have to make what we call a high value shot, which means I drop the magazine out of the rifle, which means I have only the one cartridge in the chamber. I have to retain the magazine, by the way, the rule for this match was you have to retain all of your personal gear at all times. And I now have one shot to make a target. If I miss, it's a 60 second penalty. If I forget to engage the safety all the way, I have to do that first, but there we go. I made the hit, which is excellent. I then, now, now by the way, because I've fired that one round with no magazine, my rifle is confirmed 100% unloaded. The 180 degree rule for safety no longer applies. So I grab the rifle and the kettlebell. I have to run all the way back to the APC, put the kettlebell back inside, and then crawl through the vehicle up into the top turret, where I have to reload the rifle and make one more hit on the the last target when we'll hang steel silhouettes so it takes me a, a minute here to get up through the turret with armor and backpack and rifle and all by the way i am shooting this in armored slash tst the finnish reservist division which means i'm wearing a minimum of 25 pounds of gear including rifle plates now for a moment here after i make a shot and miss i thought that it was actually only one shot one chance at a shot the RO yelled at me to keep going, and my second shot I managed to hit. So pretty good. Now, Breacher. This is a special extra division for people who are in the armored TST division and want to make things extra spicy. Jarlina, the CEO of Arstaleka, came up with it. Uh, after every stage, you do a physical evolution. Is everyone ready? Yes. Yep. Ready. Ready, Ian? Three, no. two, one. This first one is digging as big of a foxhole as you can in five minutes using a standard e-tool. I took a Finnish World War II shovel here. Nice. One minute down, nine minutes left. Plenty of time to dig a hole. You know, I heard there was some cavalry chassepots down there. Holy shit, really? Don't tease me from another foxhole. Two minutes down, eight minutes left. Deep and round. That's what we're looking for. A rock can be a curse or a blessing. Off to you. I am bloody built over here. I'm 37. <laughs> Now, the way this was scored was cylindrical volume of the hole. So they measured the diameter of the hole by the shallowest part of the hole, depth, time, depth and diameter. So scientifically, mathematically, 
the radius is much more important for the volume than the depth. So I tried to make this as wide of a hole as I could get and have a nice even flat bottom to it. And uh, that tack actually worked out pretty well. These, by the way, were actually really fun exercises. They, they were exhausting and they sucked to do while you were doing them, but we all got to do them together. Uh, it was a fun chance to really kind of build camaraderie with everyone else on the squad. 30 seconds. This is the feeling. Let's go. Yeah. 20 seconds. Push, push, push. 15 seconds. Got it. Go, go, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and time. Please stay where you are, stand next to your foxhole, and wait for measurement. Good job. All right, next one is kind of a two-part stage. The first part, you start on the back of a Sisu truck, uh, and the truck drives downrange, and you get to shoot at the steel targets here for bonus. You get a five-second bonus for each one you hit. You only get it once per target, though. And I actually managed to get two of them, which was pretty cool. So we're gonna continue this till we get to basically the end of the range. Then you get to reload, dismount, and your time actually starts when you step into the starting box. Uh, you then have a series of shooting engagements. Uh, you have to hit all four targets from each position and then move to the next. There's a sniper hide with a stage gun from Enzio at the end. And the, the cool element of the stage is that spread across the stage are landmines. They are clay pigeons that are painted green. And if you step on one at any time, uh, the stage ends for you right there. You get the par time of 180 seconds. You can see a few of the lines on the ground there. Uh, plus penalties for every target you haven't engaged when you stepped on a mine. So uh, the key is make your hits, but then pay attention to where you're stepping when you move between targets, like that, and avoid the mines. It's a, it's a really fun way to add an extra element of situational awareness uh, to the match. So I went here to reload. Oh. Oops, I stepped on a mine. Yeah, noobs, eh? It's always back. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. This is a pretty simple, basic uh, test. This is how many push ups can you do in five minutes in all of your kit. So for me, this is rifle plates, backpack, water, pistol mags, ammo, etc. And this one absolutely killed me. This is by far my worst of the bunch. Body straight all the way up. Cooking. Four minutes left. Good technique, good technique. Come on, get to 20, you can do it. Yeah. Great success! I don't practice weighted push-ups. I do push-ups, but not a ton of them, and this completely turned my arms into little noodles. 33! That was good. Maybe going faster is easier. Ready to go faster! Yeah. 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 Sorry. One minute! Three more! Three more! 38! Let's go! You can do it! You can do it! Quickly! Come on! 39! One more! One more! Come on, you got this, Ian! One more! Go, come on. Come on. Thirty-nine and a half and a half. Attention!
All right, our third stage for the day is uh, done with a 100 pound backpack. The backpack doesn't look all that huge, but it's just full of steel plates. Uh, weighs in as like 40, 45 kilo, right about 100 pounds. So the ROs help strap it on you. Uh, the stage looks deceptively simple. It doesn't seem like it's there's all that much to it. Um, there's a pretty basic low obstacle made out of a handful of pallets that you have to traverse up, up over, and back down um, between shooting sessions. I'm going to make some snarky comments here about the weight until they start leaning on me. <laughs> all right, well, let's get going. This stage on paper really is quite simple. There are two steel targets downrange, and you have to hit one of them from each each of the marked ports in the VTAC, uh, and then run over to the other VTAC. I'm able to scamper right across pretty quickly, at least the very first time, and uh, then you make three hits again from the second VTAC barricade, and you just go back and forth until you've acquired, I believe it's 18 hits. So, uh, <laughs> What makes this difficult is the fact that you're doing the whole thing with an 18 pound or with a 100 pound pack on your back. So the ports are sighted such that you have to either bend over or kneel down in order to get a sight picture through them. I do most of this with both feet on the ground instead of taking a knee. It's a bit easier for me to do that than to go down to a knee and then come back up. You can see here I'm already going uh, quite a bit slower on only my third run past. So the G3 continues to work perfectly for me here. The ACOG is there. Well, the ACOG is on this rifle because I wanted magnification. Not so much because the targets that finish brutality are really small. They're generally actually not. They're mostly relatively large targets. And in this case, they're only at 50 or 75 yards, but the targets are very often dirt colored. They don't get repainted between stages very deliberately. Um, I'm, by the way, reloading there proactively. I took a pair of coupled mags with me to use on some stages. This is one of them. I recognized that I'd made enough misses that I wasn't going to be able to complete the, the stage on one magazine alone, so I proactively reloaded it while I was moving. Here, I'm getting fatigued enough that I actually do have to take a knee to get that hit, and then scooch over to this one, and then I get to stand up from a knee with that pack. <laughs> which is getting hard by this point in the stage. So one more run through. The ACOG worked really well for me here. Um, three and a half power is a really nice balance between being able to see targets better, but not having such a small field of view that it's hard to find your targets. And last shot, oh, last hit. There we go. Not too bad, really. Unload our stuff here. Our third breach revolution are paratrooper burpees, which I had not heard about before, but they are a part of Finnish paratrooper training, apparently, and they also look pretty simple. It's That's one, by the way. Lie down on your belly, arms out, stand up, arms up, lie down on your back, arms out, stand up, arms out. That's one. So these, these take a fair amount of time, and they seem really pretty simple. Like, there's no really strenuous part of again. this activity. And yet, when you do it for, I believe this was three minutes straight, uh, they get pretty, pretty tiring. 12. I'm slowing down a bit here, as you can see. 13. 11. Two minutes past. 13. Two minutes past. Three left. Three left. Three left. Fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> Seventeen. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Sixteen. Breathe. Eighteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Nineteen. Twenty-one. And, of course, this is all being done in full kit and armor. That's part of the point of Breacher Division is to make it hard. Um, overall, I actually did pretty well at this one. This is something I was able to pull off. Push-ups, not so much. These? Yeah, these I was pretty decent at. 25! Another one! Woo! 
Push, push, push. One more, one more. And the eight. Push, push, push. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. I think you beat the other. How much? Oh, the last one. Couple of seconds. See, Yari started slow and saved his energy for the last ones, and he exploded. <sighs> How does that feel? Feels so much better than running. This was perhaps one of the coolest stages of the whole match, I think. So, uh, combination, some rifle, some pistol, and you had to treat a critically injured casualty in the middle of the stage. So, it begins with this run over to the far bay, load your rifle, and engage a couple of steel plates. Nothing particularly difficult or complex here, just a couple of target engagements. 308 really rings these plates at uh, relatively close range. Now, keeping your rifle pointed in a safe direction, you're going to ditch the rifle on that box and then attend to the casualty who's here with an amputated leg. You use the tourniquet on him. You have to open it completely up and wrap it around uh, his leg. It is, there's a marked spot where you do it. And I'm really good at this. Uh, there is fake blood from the wound, and that wound will stop bleeding only when I get the tourniquet properly applied and tight enough. So I've got it cinched over, velcro down, now I'm going to tighten up the windlass on it. And I'm actually watching the bleeding, and there the bleeding stops. Tie the tourniquet over, and now I move back, pick up the rifle, uh, engage a couple more targets, and then move on to pistol. So it was super, super cool to have the like the casualty actors there to give a really much more lifelike aspect to that part of the stage. That was really cool. So um, there are a group of guys who do medical training professionally in Finland, uh, and they did a really good job at that. Now, we have another high value shot here. I pull the magazine. I now have one round in the chamber, and I have one shot to make a target miss, and it's a 60 second penalty. I made it. Now... I have to uh, retain the rifle, which I'm going to do just by slinging it, draw a pistol, and engage the dueling tree here. So this is the first time the pistols come out in the match. I used a SIG M18 with their new Romeo M17 red dot, and I will have a full video on what I think of that red dot and the pistol and how it all worked for me, but uh, doing fairly well here. I don't have a whole lot of trouble clearing this dueling tree. A couple of misses, but overall, not bad. There it is. Um, very happy with my place on this stage. Next breacher evolution is window entry. Jump over this fence. Seems very simple. Uh, over and back counts as one. I like jumping. I'm pretty good at jumping. I figured this should be uh, pretty easy for me, but surprise, surprise, it, it got a lot harder as time went on. I believe we had two full minutes uh, for this one. How many can you do in two minutes? Um, I kind of start to slow down here. Things get a little sluggish and a little clumsy. And then we switch over to just rolling over the fence. In retrospect, it probably would have been more efficient to just start with that movement, but that kind of seemed like a cop-out. And I didn't think I'd need to do that at the beginning. 15 seconds left. 20. 16. Back, one more. You got it. You got it. Go, 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 go. Seventeen! Go, go, go. Two! Seventeen, you're good. Time! Good job, Alan. Fifteen. That was harder than I thought. Fifteen. You beat the other. And our last stage for the first day uh, used a really cool set of electronic computerized targets. So the targets have lights on them, and when the target is blinking green, it is valid to shoot. If you hit it, it pops yellow for a moment. There is a computer system that records 
uh, your hits, the targets will only blink green for a set period of time, in this case, 13 seconds, and then they go off. Uh, you have to shoot each target from its associated shooting point. The middle one is a little two by two stick. And from the middle position, you have to engage it uh, on only one foot. So you have to, well, sorry, without any feet touching the ground. So you have to either stand with one foot in the air or with both feet on the stick. I went for uh, one foot on the stick, one foot in the air. That seemed to be the easiest way for me. I would get a sight picture and then lift my foot up when I took a shot. Um, the third one you have to shoot from the box right there. Note that there's a no shoot uh, popper in front of it. And the first position you have to shoot through the VTAC and there's also a, a no shoot partially obscuring that target. So the targets are in a random order. And it's this was a really cool stage of uh, you have to wait and respond to the targets as they light up. Uh, you had a limitation of 24 rounds fired, uh, 26 rounds fired, a uh, maximum of 24 targets that you could successfully engage uh, in the stage. Now, this was a pretty simplistic use of this system. I think there is an incredible realm of, of possibilities for what can be done with targets like this. And I'm really excited to see uh, what Finnish Brutality does with these uh, in years going forward. Just having a, a set of them operating at random here is is pretty it's a pretty basic use of, of this. So you can see here, sometimes I'll hit one and then you have to wait for another target to light up, but you never know, will it be over on the side where you are? Will it be on the opposite side? Uh, this was a fun stage. Uh, and again, the, the SIG and the Romeo M17 Dot do a perfectly good job here for me. I'm, I'm very happy with them. I had no problems with the pistol throughout the match. No real problems with the Red Dot either. Certainly no mechanical problems. So that is just about it. There we go. That's it for me for this stage. And that leads us to one final Breacher evolution. And that is filling sandbags. You have three sandbags. You have to uh, fill them up with dirt and take them back to where you started. And this one really was uh, pretty simple, pretty easy, and sucked a lot less than the other Breacher Evolutions this day. How much do you love shoveling dirt right now? I mean, by the shoveling shit, I think it's, I feel like it's better than the end of the wall jumping. <laughs> Definitely better than running. Everyone yeah, who thinks running's it. better, raise their hand. I love it. Much better than running. The running reference here is a reference to uh, Recon Division last year where you had to run three kilometers between every stage, and that was really pretty awful. So uh, Breacher Division replaced Recon and uh, was was much more enjoyable to do. Ooh. You'll get to do exciting sniper stuff, they said. And CQB and digging holes and filling sandbags, they didn't say. This one really was sort of an outlier in Breacher in that I felt like you couldn't really get completely physically gassed out from doing it because there was an element of finesse that you had to get the dirt into the sandbag and that prevented you from just, you know, going all out super fast. So... Uh, definitely a physical thing, and uh, we were being timed on this, so fastest person wins. But, like, you have to be careful. You have to be able to get the dirt into the sandbag. If you go too fast and end up dumping all the dirt around the sandbag and it doesn't actually go in, well, that doesn't really do you any good. Gotta take the same number of trips. I'm not carrying three of these at once. Giga is. Well, I'm not. Giga's like that, though. I don't That was legitimately the least worst one yet. All right, that's day one down. Oh, five stages, five breacher exercises. I am so ready. 
And it's candy wrappers. Oh. <laughs> and I'm tired enough. The backpack's gotta come off first. <laughs> Oh. Oh. All right, now I need to go order a phenomenally large hamburger. Give the soup a BBQ bacon burger. And have a long drink. <laughs> Keep this.